call upon the glory of the Lord. Upon the line. So, it's good. My time is almost here. I got 10 minutes. I do. Because I got to be at the airport. Pray for me. <clears throat> Pray that the airplane may delay. No, I'm joking. <laughs> but you have to understand, this is resurrection, right? Resurrection is built into creation. Think about it. Creation was in chaos. At least the earth. Buried in the abyss. The spirit of the Lord moved upon it. There was chaos. There was chaos. There was formlessness. And the spirit of the Lord moved upon the waters. And darkness was in the depths. I think that's sure enough to talk about conditions of death. Conditions of lifelessness. Right? What is the purpose for which God? Why did God? I'm going to try to answer it for God. I don't know. I, I mean, see, see, because I'm a preacher, so I've got to be presumptuous and answer stuff for God. Right? But, but, but we're, we're going to ask why God decided to pull the earth out of chaos. Why not just destroy it? And, and just like, ah, too soupy, too dark. Ah, it's gone way too deep in mess. But God took the time to raise the earth from chaos, from the depths, from the abyss. But not only that, the first thing God did was hover over, because it's the spirit of Elohim that hovered over the earth in his formlessness. So what's the purpose for this? From what we read, and we didn't read all the texts that are supposed to be in today, because the text that was for today was Genesis, the creation of man. Noah, Genesis 6, the bringing forth of man and the continuous of generation. The next one, text I was supposed to be in there, we were supposed to read today, we didn't read because of technology. What did we do before we got the technology? <laughs> it's messed us up right now. You know? We had books. <laughs> the next text is God calling Abraham. And then the final text is what? Is the resurrection of Jesus. I think the people who put the text are talking about a simple fact that everything that God did or does is to bring forth man, humanity. Let's use the word humanity because you know gotta be inclusive. You know, so Anthropos, Adam, you know, the, everything that God did was to bring forth humanity towards a greater and better form until humanity came forth in the resurrection of Jesus Christ as a full manifestation of divinity. So, the reason for me that God called the earth out of chaos was because Adam was coming. He wanted to manifest God wanted to manifest God's self in what? In the creation of an image and a likeness. Reason God preserved Noah, we learn, is because Noah was perfect in his genetic structure because God is not looking for superhuman. God is looking for humans. That's why God made man out of the dust so that he can recreate the world. So that God can or God can show his power out of weakness. Are you okay? So the first one was Adam. Was dust. He breathed on him, brought him forth, and told him, rule the world. Woo! The second one was Noah. With all the imperfection, all of his people are died and the Bible says, and you know my teaching is, the word generation should be read genetics. Because God's looking for human beings. 
The problem we have in the world is people who hate humanity. God loves humanity. It's very simple. God's, God's, God is obsessed with human beings. I don't know why. But, <laughs> but he is obsessed with us. So he brought out Noah. And as the world was moving, he called another man. Abraham. Oh, there's another passage in the, in the text, which is the bringing out of Israel from the house of bondage. So, God's looking for a human being, but not just a single human being. He's looking for a human being. So, we come to the New Testament, we find a man. It's from the Bible says, for there is one mediator between God and it doesn't say the God Christ Jesus. It says what? The man Christ Jesus. So the focus of God is man. And the problem man has is that man forgets that God is not focused on the devil. God's not focused on angels. God's not focused on the structure of heaven. God's not focused on whatever else you think he's focused on. God's focus is humanity. And the goal of creation has always been for humanity to become a full embodiment of divinity. And God will not give up and didn't give up so, in order to make sure that humanity understands this, God raised a man from the dead. Right? The goal has always been the manifestation of humanity. The goal of God has not been seen. God's not focused on your sin. God's not focused on your failure. God's not focused on... The crazy stuff you eat. Are you okay? All that stuff is incidental. We don't say accidental. <laughs> Just what God is focused on is humanity as human beings. Now you're going to say, but human beings are weak. Then God says, my strength is made perfect in weakness. Human beings are just completely foolish and they're just ignorant. God says, I want to use that foolishness to unconfound the wise. Human beings are powerless. God says, that's exactly why I'm focused on them. Because I want to show that I can raise the dust. I can raise whatever, call it, complete blob to the level of divinity. It's, it's amazing to me, God did not make Jesus when he came into the world to come in with wings and sirens and heavenly band. Now they sang when he was born. But it didn't mean Mary didn't go through pain. So he came in in blood, in mess, like all of us did. He died like all of us may. Remember I said may. Because, um, according to biblical stuff, we may be transformed one day. There's a generation that will completely be transformed and not die. That's what the Bible says. Some of us will not sleep. And every, the human consciousness is now raising the construct of immortality. So which means that something's been hiding in our mind for these years. That the purpose for which God called for the earth out of chaos 
was to was to what was to manifest a human being as what as an embodiment of divinity and that purpose of god must be fulfilled are you okay and the exemplification and the reality or uh, the, 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 the manifestation of that divine reality is in the person of Jesus Christ. Is in a Messiah. Born, went around eating food like everybody, joking with his friends, looked like he was nobody, once in a while does an incredible miracle. You know? And people still said, nah. That's the devil. Was spoken badly, just like you are. And the condition of his birth wasn't really something to write home about. Oh, you say now I was born of a, a virgin, an angel came. But that wasn't the way the society saw it. Angel, yeah, right, Mary. Angel, yeah, right, Mary. I could imagine some prostitute on the street saying to Mary, yeah, I met an angel too. <laughs> you, you get the point. The condition wasn't really, I mean, because we're believers, we tend to think that that's how everybody saw Jesus. And the condition was, what? Not really the optimal. But God used it anyway. But the goal of all of that stuff is this, that no matter what happens to an individual, no matter the condition of your birth, no matter what people, uh, we can say, no matter if your mom was standing in the peak of mud when she got pregnant with you, doesn't matter. God's purpose still stands. And that purpose is to bring you to the point of a resurrected life, which is an embodiment of divinity. The seed of God in you, which is started in Adam, which he preserved in Noah, which he calls forth in Abraham, which he brought forth by preserving Israel and allowing the Torah to become an embedded principle in the body of a, of a group of human beings till it was manifested in a person called Yeshua. And yet, didn't just manifest, he still allowed him to die to prove to you that the seed of divine thoughts will never and can never be completely destroyed. The promise of divinity in your life can never be destroyed. Resurrection was embedded in Genesis and it was repeated over and over by the choosing, by the choosing of specific persons and people. People that you never thought should survive. God drew them out just to reiterate Resurrection is possible. The divinity, the seed of divinity is the heart of resurrection. The same spirit that hovered over the earth to cause the earth to answer the voice of God has been hovering over creation for those who will hear the voice. And the greatest manifestation is the resurrection because it says that it is the spirit, that same spirit, that raised up Jesus Christ from the dead. Why resurrection? Because the resurrection is the final manifestation and the final structuring, you may, of the divine intent for which he made humanity. Because only a resurrected person, a resurrected being, 
can handle the fullness of God. Oh, by the way, because that is God's purpose, that's why you can be renewed now. Because resurrection is embedded. That condition you find yourself in, that you think is going to kill you, even if it does, it will raise you back. Because the resurrection principle is in you. We die daily, but we don't remain dead. We die in circumstances. But we raise up, we rise up. We are always raised by God. The resurrection of Jesus is the ultimate. But I'm telling you, by that resurrection and by the original intent, every circumstance in life has resurrection vibrating in it. That's not the end of your life. Just because you're suffering doesn't mean you're dying. You're going to die. It's not the end. It's only the end if you accept that it is the end. But there's a resurrection in your condition right now. A possibility of renewal, a renaissance, a rising up, a, a coming forth in your condition. I mean, this is a short time to talk about this, but you heard me talk about this again. God raised Adam from the dead. Breathed on him and became a living soul. Noah was supposed to die with everyone. God brought him out. Abraham was part of the Chaldean principle where idol worship was the way. And death was the only way that killing and bloodshed was the way that they accessed their God. God pulled him out of that pool. Israel, in the context of slavery, in which a pharaoh can summon hell over the people that he holds, yet God pulled them out. Pulled them out. Do you think your condition? has no way for you to come out. If you think that way, that thought is not from God. You are not meant to be held prisoner by your condition. Somebody say with me, resurrection is possible. Even in my condition. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and I am the life. You carry resurrection. If they take you and bury you on the third day, you will rise. Okay, listen. I know we're talking about Jesus. But Jesus is resurrected. If Jesus' resurrection is just about Jesus, then we got a problem. But Jesus' resurrection is about your resurrection. Your renewal, your renaissance, your coming out, your standing up, your... Amen, I'm done. 